welcome back to Woodcrafting Place. Ray Ruthen here. So we've got a great project for you today. So let's grab our coffee and get to it. <laughs> Hey there, welcome back to the Woodcrafting Place. Ray Ruthen here. Have you ever had that happen to you? Well, let me tell you, it's frustrating sometimes when you're standing on the bench and no matter what you do, your piece keeps flying off. The belt sands just wants to keep running and the wood just doesn't want to stay there. Don't be alarmed. No project was actually harmed in the making of this video. I've tried many solutions, as I'm sure many of you have had, on how to hold that board there. You can clamp it, but that's a pain because you have to keep moving the clamps. And uh, if you have more than one piece, it's slow. I was recently working on a vacuum truck for my lathe, and I had an aha moment. Well, if the vacuum will hold the piece of wood sitting on the lathe, why can't I use a vacuum to hold? a piece of wood still on the table while it's sanding. So after making this nifty sanding table that you saw in the video, I, my, the wheels started turning and so we're going to try a little experiment. We're going to take rubber boot, which is nothing more than, a, in this case it's a three inch rubber boot for a drain waste plumbing, some three inch PVC and a cap. And we're going to make ourselves a little fixture that should use vacuum to hold the piece still on the workbench. So, if all goes well, you should be able to use this not necessarily on a sanding table alone. You can use it on a workbench or wherever you need to. You can also adjust the sizes of the holding fixture. Three inch PVC and three inch diameter provided me an impressive amount to hold. I'll admit, and you'll see that when we're done, it'll hold easily 50 pounds of pressure, more than enough for your work piece. And if you wish and you need to hold more than one piece, maybe we'll give that a try too in manifolding. So let's see if we can make this make sense. So we'll tackle that right now. When we left off last time, the plan was to produce a vacuum pickup to hold the wood in place on the sanding table. I did a little engineering investigation before I started cutting the parts and materials to go on there. And I was wondering, you know, that's a pretty big hole. And I'm not sure I want a gaping hole that size in my sanding table. So I took piece of inch and a quarter and two inch PVC which will leave actually a much smaller hole you can see there in the sanding table top hooked it up to my vacuum pump and I used the criteria if I could pick up the sunk of two by eight and it had enough vacuum to hold it so I could lift it right up by the vacuum alone and I was pretty well assured that I'd have enough vacuum to hold it still from the belt sander. Now I know that this gives me more than enough. I've heard it stated it's like 50 pounds of force and based on what it took for me to pry a, a bowl off of this chuck, I'd agree that it's a lot of holding power. So when I ran the inch and a quarter, the inch and a quarter almost lifted the board off not quite. So I went up to two inch and that was more than enough. So I decided, although this would probably be enough to hold the wood from sliding, I'm going to take the middle road. So we're going to stick with two inches this time around to do our process, all right? And we're act I'm actually going to put two of these into the sanding table because it's not unusual for me to sand more than one part at a time. So you'll see how we use a boot, here's a big one, three inch, 
some PVC, okay, the cap. Most of you guys who do plumbing work already know how to join all this stuff. And as I mentioned, we'll go over the details of, in this case, the manifold. It doesn't have to be a manifold. You could make this a single port to connect up to your vacuum pump. So, and also, the other engineering solution I had to overcome was how do we disconnect it because if they're all threaded tightly and together, it's really inconvenient to disconnect. So it's got to be a good disconnect. The vacuum's lost very easily. And then last but not least, the funny part, once you hook up to a vacuum and that grabs in and sucks down, you can't pull it apart. So you need a way to, to remove and release this easily without having to pry it off. We'll go into those details. So let's get to making the fixtures. So we got over to the chop saw and cut about three and a half inches of two, two inch diameter PVC. Now we're going to take this, we're going to drill a hole in it first for the threads for the fitting. So let's do that. Okay, we're not going to put the fitting in just yet. What you're going to do is we're going to glue the cap onto the end of the PVC. As with any plumbing, you want to make sure that you treat the threads with Teflon tape or some other sealant product because metal and plastic threads don't seal very well against each other. So put that on. There we go. Now, should it leak at all, you can just treat and inside and outside with some caulking, some silicone caulking. My experience so far has been pretty good. They don't get much in the way of leaks from that joint. Next, we're going to seal this, the other end, which is unsealed so far, with, as I mentioned, a rubber drain waste boot. Took one two inch boot, cut it in half, so that I have one for each one of my two backing adapters. So this particular end was kind of wavy with a lot of flash on it. So I carved off the flash and went over to the belt sander. Put it on the belt sander, that that bench type sander, to get it nice and flat. One thing you want to keep in mind when you go over to the sander, though, because it's so flexible, you're going to want to put it over a piece of PVC first and leave that backing. Otherwise, when you go to hit it, the sander, it just flexes and it moves and you won't get what you want. All right, so we're going to put the boot on and we're going to leave it about a quarter of an inch or so, maybe a little more, protruding. That way when the vacuum takes hold, this has just a little bit of give to suck down and it will actually pull the board into the table. At least that's the theory. We're going to find out. So now we're going to tighten this up. All right. 
So we've got two vacuum heads. So we'll move off to this manifold that I'm using. And we'll give you a quick rundown of what this is. This is a from left to right quick disconnect. This is the end that we're connecting to the vacuum pump. And there we go to. And again, quarter inch pipe thread. We have a nipple in there into a T. Off of that, we have a valve. This valve will connect into this adapter. That adapter will run to, PV to some clear plastic tubing to each one of these. That's why there's two. And I was not sure if I was going to get to this one today, but we'll do it. So, so on there goes my additional valve. Cool. And on to that goes my last barbed adapter. Now you notice that this valve is already treated with some sealant, so I don't need any Teflon tape on this one. Now you might, you may be wondering, why three valves? So when I'm using the sanding table, if I have one vacuum connected to the vacuum to the part, and one not being used, if I don't have a way of sealing this off, I'll never get a full vacuum. So this way, if I'm only sanding against one vacuum port, I can close this off, just like that, and I'll maintain a full vacuum. So if we're using one or two, as I'm, vac as I'm sanding, I'm sanding, I want to get the part off, I now have this valve. So I throw that valve over, it bleeds the vacuum off, Vacuum heads release, part comes up without any force. So this is ready to go. Let's talk a little bit about the sanding table. So I built this a while back and it's done pretty good. It does a, a okay job of holding this sawdust down. It's not, so it's not a big cloud. This is really a very simple table. You've got pegboard. For your basic top and what you see underneath is just your basic framework these are supports that need to be firmly attached and there's a plastic dust collection hood here in the middle that goes down and I hook my four inch intake exhaust to my uh, dust collector which is over in the closet behind me these edges are all caulked here Underneath is caulked here as well. When I Don't have too much protruding. If it does, then it just deforms when the vacuum pulls. Just enough. Only gotta assume a very flat surface and the vacuum sucks down. It's plenty. Awesome. The other one, and
Now the vacuum pickups are all installed. I just have to run the tubing. Barb here. Okay, let's do number two. So we got we've got both lines run. And she's bombed. Alright. So now let's put it all together and do a test. Table's all done, put together. You can see we've got the plumbing in place. Vacuum pump is hooked up. That's the exhaust. Plumbed with our quick connect. Ready to go. Need to put a bracket on that to hold it a little more securely. But turn our vacuum pump on. Things to keep in mind when using a vacuum pump, make sure you start and stop your vacuum pump with the vent open. Do not start or stop your vacuum pump with a sealed chamber or sealed connection, especially stopping. The vacuum will lock up the pump and you may not get started again. So, all right, so we're ready to go. So I got some two sample boards here. And my two ports. So first we're going to try the right, excuse me, we're going to try the right, we're going to close this one. Now I don't know if you can hear the change in tone, but I can definitely tell that that has got a good hold. That was quite a bit of force required. A lot more in a belt sander we'll put on there. Okay, so we're going to release it, and it pops right up. Now we're going to switch over to the left, and it grabs a hole, nice tight release. Now we're going to do both. go. It's a concept. It works. I highly recommend using a vacuum pump instead of using a shop vac or something of that nature. Vacuum pump is soaked in oil. It, it's, the pump is filled with oil so it can run long periods under pressure shop back will suffer after a while and the motor will burn out. Now I want to do sanding and I don't want to use it, then I'll just fill this with a plug to keep the sawdust from in there. Also when I made my plugs, and we'll shut this off, okay notice when I shut it off that was open. Something you want to be aware of. This will eventually be caulked down when we're done with the project. The vacuum intake, you can see it right here, is not all the way at the bottom or coming out of the bottom. The reason I did that is so that if, when sawdust falls down into the cavity, it falls down below the vacuum intake. And I can always get in there and vacuum that out. Any dirt or stuff that's in there, I just clean it out. If I had it in the bottom, the vacuum would just start pulling it all the way out. Then pull the dust, sawdust all the way back into the vacuum pump, eat up the pump, and it would reduce the life of the pump. So, so that's it. As always, with all my projects, you'll find plans and materialists on the link woodcraftingplace.com
if you liked what you saw today. Make sure you like and subscribe. Click on that bell to get all notifications of new content. The next video, for those of you who are interested, will be about how we make our videos. So that will be coming up next. Hope you enjoy the show and stay tuned. There's more to come. Thanks. Have a great day. Don't forget, like and subscribe. The thumb, smash it. Really, do it now. Hit that thumb.